1-800-848-4840. That's the news at one. I'm Michael Isaac, WNEW News, on the Steve Allen Show. <laughs> A few minutes after one at WNEW, a little later this hour, ask Dr. Allen, and of course our special guest, Henry Morgan, and here is Steve Allen. Well, Dr. Morgan will help Dr. Allen, perhaps uh, as a co-consultant in some of these uh, <coughs> complaints and inquiries that we will accept a little bit later. Henry was down with us on the sidewalk at the corner of 42nd and 3rd a few minutes ago, and he lingered down there apparently uh, after we left. How was it down there? I will tell you how it was down there, but first I want to put in a tiny comment on uh, about your newscaster who was just on the air. Mr. Lysak, yes. Yes, he said it was delightfully warm. Now, the word delightfully is an opinion. I just want to hear the news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In other words, an Eskimo might not find this temperature so delightful. I'm not delighted. I like cool weather. I see. If he's delighted, that's all right, but let him save that for when he gets home. All right. Now, down on the corner, it yes. was... You know, Steve, I've often envied your ability to talk to anybody and get laughs. <laughs> anybody. I can't get laughs out of my wife, you know, a good part of the time. But watching on the sidewalk reminded me of the days when you used to do what I thought was one of the great things in television, when you walked among the audience. Yes. With no preparation, no remote idea of what's going to happen to you. And that's something you do so magnificently, and there's, um, uh, there doesn't seem to be a place for that. I wish you would invent one. <laughs> well, uh, the David Letterman show is one place Come for it at the on. moment. But, uh, no, actually, no, as Mark was do saying you earlier... Do David Letterman's amusing? Truly. No, I don't... No, no, no. See, you that's know, unfair. The difference that's is... Unfair. Now it Ask is. me. All right. Henry, do you think David Letterman's amusing? No, sir. All right. But, you know, the difference nowadays is when someone Would walks into... Would you please keep out of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a guest. Is There's it? another thing. I, I, <laughs> they were talking about uh, uh, your newscaster. Now, they all do this, all sports people. Uh, the Mets are hosting somebody. Yes. Now, if you're the host, are you going to try to kill your guest? No. <laughs> you would Mets lose do. gracefully, right? <laughs> the Mets have, you know, we're the, we're the host, right? Yes. Now, look out, kid, because we're going to knock your head off. What kind of hosting is that? Very poor hosting indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you. That's well, two things I'm you're about right finished. Are the calls coming in yet? <laughs> <laughs> David Letterman is on the line just a moment ago. David Letterman, I don't understand. It, it may be old age on my part. No, I think he has a genial charm. He he looks as if he would make a nice brother-in-law. Just, I mean, if you had a brother sister... Brother-in-law, okay. Yes. Okay, but I, I have a brother-in-law of whom I'm fond, but I don't want to watch him on television. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has a, a likability. He does. I, I, so it appears to me. Is that what we need in the world, is just likability and no talent? Well, I wouldn't say he has no talent. I would. All right, that's twice that you... Because <laughs> whatever the talent he has, if it exists, escapes me. Well, and I'm literate. I, You know, I read. You raise an interesting question, which is, of course, what you do for a living. You always raise interesting questions. And that relates to a point I have made repeatedly, that although some talk show hosts are and or have been talented... Nevertheless, it does not at all require talent to host a talk show. So I think you're on my side, and you're sneaky about it. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I find David funnier, obviously, than you do. But the point is, there See, are... Like, tell you, Carson is a wit. Yes. He's a legitimate, witty he, man. He ad-libs funny things, yes. Yes, he do. Yes. I have never heard Letterman ad-lib anything funny, and he has 12 writers. Their names come up on the screen, and I wonder, uh, what do they write? Well, I only see the show about once every six months, so I, I'm not an expert on that subject, but uh, everyone to his own opinion. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, one of the things There's that another one on who's worse than he is. Who that? Can't think of his name. He's an old-time stand-up, uh, old-time, new-time stand-up. David com- Brenner? Brenner. Ah. Him out out dead dead really? well now he is witty you you he's witty i have seen him what am witty. i an imbecile here I, <laughs> no truly I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm an amateur in the wit game no you are a, a noted wit yeah yes well i'll make a note uh but truly it it it, 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 it bothers me tr- tremendously because i think Maybe, I'm, I'm aware of the generation gaps, etc., mm-hmm. um, but are they using a language I don't know? Uh, some of them are, but, but I find a lot of the younger comedians very funny. We had yes, some, Martin some Short, who was here last week. Beautiful. Good, okay, so it's not a generation gap. You do find some very young oh, people yes. very funny. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, then, then rule out the generation thing. Okay. Okay, good. I feel better. 
<laughs> Billy Crystal Thank is you, very good. Billy Crystal is very uh, clever and Verges on genius. Sometimes. Yes, brilliant, brilliantly funny, very yes. original kinds of stuff. Oh, thank goodness. I, I, I'm, you're putting things back in balance, and I feel a lot nicer. How do you feel about Pee Wee Herman since you're delivering yourself of these opinions? He's not going to like him. Really? <laughs> Henry slipped from his chair. But Which he's camera not... am I facing? <laughs> Kiwi Herman. <laughs> I told you. You 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 use language like that in front of me. <laughs> well, Kiwi I took a Herman. shot. He exists. Yes, he exists. I thank the good Lord that he's allowed to exist. I'm allowed to exist. All right. He doesn't come to my house. I don't go to his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's hard to judge I him. I would like to make a public statement. Very He's well. never coming to my house, and <laughs> I'm never going to his house. So it shall Thank be... Thank you, Pee Wee Herb. ...duly noted. Now, it's a little tough to Suppose judge... He's named after his parents? Uh... His father was P and his mother was we or something like that? It, it could be. Or the other way around? Yeah. <laughs> he is, is a little hard could to judge as I was... P. About... <laughs> 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 Who was the baby in Popeye? Pee Wee? Sweet, Sweet Pea. Sweet, Sweet Pea. Yeah. Sweet Pea Herman. That might have been more fitting. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, that's sure, actually a character. A he, and stick a nipple in his mouth. That, <laughs> that is a character he does, just as Bill Daney used to do. Jose Jimenez. I understand. So, in other words, that's it was, not the real Pee Wee. Uh, uh, no, the it, real one is a philosopher, a savant, a brain surgeon. Mm -hmm. Yes, a holy yes. man, and so forth. Yes, lexicographer, <laughs> calligrapher, <laughs> a a telegrapher. One of my terrible words. <laughs> You know, one of the things that, that uh, has always annoyed me about crowds, to refer back to the crowd... Why are we that, getting off Pee Wee Herman? I think we're, we're not. We have a nice time. We're just letting him up to breathe for a minute. <laughs> no, the, I noticed that... <laughs> Push him down again. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that ever bugged me about television when I got into it back around 1949 and 50 was the waivers. There were people in an audience. I saw one... Where did I see one? Oh, this morning. I, I was watching the CBS morning show, and... Uh, they were handing out Mother's Day roses or peonies or something to the women in the audience who were mothers. Mm -hmm. There was one woman, old woman with glasses, who was totally oblivious to what uh, the people on the show were saying or what was being done. She didn't care. She didn't know from roses or from Mother's Day. She was transfixed by her, the sight of her face on the screen, the studio TV monitor, and she began to wave at herself. <laughs> I was puzzled in 1949 as to why people would wave Did at themselves. Did you know that woman in 1949? She looks very familiar. The way she waved, or wove, is in the past tense, uh, looked very familiar, distressingly so. Uh, the reason, the point of these unseemly ruminations is that downstairs, where we didn't even have a camera, I saw two people waving. <laughs> they figured there might be a camera in a window or something. But why do people wave? I, I've seen train wrecks with bodies strewn about the you know Vermont underbrush, and there's a, a concerned young man with a trench coat saying, well, so far, 42 bodies have been pulled from the wreckage, and he's interviewing a police chief who says, well, I don't think we're going to find any more in there. And behind them, they're idiots smiling and waving. Why? Well, there was that uh, dismal modern artist who said that everybody will be famous for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and people have now boiled it down to about eight seconds. So if they can get on the show and wave... Eight seconds is yeah. enough. I was on television, you know, right. I hope you, my friends and neighbors yeah. saw So their friends can say, hey, I seen you on the train wreck. Yes. Did you <laughs> see me waving? Yes. Among the bodies? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have to stop for a minute, and then we'll continue with Steve Allen and Henry Morgan on WNEW. Garden State Dining proudly presents New Jersey's finer restaurants. At La Petite Dauberge, the preparation and presentation of fine food is an art. You'll find a world-class wine list and the very finest French cuisine prepared by Master Chef Jean Breck and served in an elegant atmosphere. You'll love La Petite Auberge, fine French cuisine in Creskill. For delicious German cuisine, visit King's Ransom in Waldwick. They specialize in fresh seafood and veal dishes, expertly prepared and served in a warm and inviting setting. Banquet facilities are available and there's live entertainment every weekend at King's Ransom in Waldwick. For authentic Cantonese, Sichuan, and Polynesian cuisine, it's Lee's Hawaiian Islander. Enjoy barbecued shrimp, lobster, their famous poo-poo platter, and at their Clifton and Lindhurst locations, a Polynesian Schmorgas Luau at Lee's Hawaiian Islander. Enjoy fine Italian seafood at moderate prices at Piccolissimo. Specialties like shrimp primavera and lobster fra diavolo served in the beautiful glassed-in garden cafe. Piccolissimo has Mulberry Street charm, but they're located on Palisades Avenue, Fort Lee. 
We're here at Sears celebrating the Sears Day sale. With savings throughout the entire store. Like the biggest Levi sale of the season on men's Levi Action Slacks. Save $8. Now only $19.99. Men's Levi knit shirts and jeans are on sale too. Levi sale ends Saturday the 11th. So hurry in for men's Levi Action Slacks at just $19.99. A sale as great as its name. What's that name? Sears Day sale. There's more for your life at Sears. Throughout history, people with vision have made some incredible deals. 1626, the Dutch purchased the island of Manhattan for $24. 1905, Harry Harrison buys two priceless Van Goghs for $5. Mother's Day, 1987, Bob Spofford buys his wife a Polaroid 50th anniversary kit, then gets a 600 series camera up to $10 off, coupons worth up to $30, and two free packs of film. This offer ends July 4th, so hurry to your Polaroid dealer, because there's no telling when history will repeat itself. One shot went into the ceiling, the other shot hit Jake, and he fell dead. What went on that day in Rochelle Fine's attic? Did she kill her husband, or did her lover pull the trigger? When Jake would go to work, he would come down and visit. Today at 4.30 on Channel 2, an adulterous affair takes a deadly turn. Now, who'll pay on Superior Court? Before Jake could do anything, Art pulled a gun out of his pocket. It's Killers on Trial Week on Superior Court. Today at 4.30 on Channel 2. Then... Do you wear braces on your teeth or know someone who does? Well, smile. Today at 5 on Channel 2 News, Earl Duvel shows you the latest thing in dental wear. Invisible braces. Then at 5.30, what's the latest craze among movie stars? Tatum O'Neill and L.A. Law's Corbin Burson will tell you. Plus at 6, is a Bronx company dumping dangerous, toxic chemicals into our city sewer system? Arnold Diaz takes you on a Target 2 investigation tonight on Channel 2 News. This is Mark Simone. Join me Sunday nights at 6 for the Nat King Cole Hour. There's only one W-N-E-W-E-11-3-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
Um, you have some questions there? No, I was just uh, glancing at, at some notes. We have uh, this uh, strange spectacle now of a garbage... It's not a garbage scow, is it? Is there barge. any other kind of a scow? It's a barge. barge. A barge is a scow, really. All right. Would you look up scow, uh, yeah. please? <laughs> and we'll... And if it comes out barge, forget it. Okay. But if it doesn't, there'll be... They're both shallow. All hell to raise. Now, yeah, it's, it's a f comedy thing now. You, people, you see people sitting at home, and uh, suddenly they show a picture of that poor scow or barge, and everybody goes, oh. But, you know, it's a tragedy because all over the country people are running out of places to put garbage. Dreadfully serious problem. But I think the, the fate of the garbage boat itself, I think Aaron Spelling could start a new series called Garbage Boat. <laughs> or Scow. Uh, yes, with some of the same people that were formerly connected <laughs> with Love Boats. They could have a bartender. Please, you remind me of something for, for, for no re good reason. Uh, <laughs> you know how feminists uh, want to change man to either woman or person. Yeah. Like chairperson. Or humankind. Or how whatever. about garbage person? Suppose you have a lady who picks up garbage. Is she... <laughs> <laughs> a bag lady. You can't say a garbage man. No. Garbage that person. That reminds me of a joke from the 1920s. Post, post, we had a town I lived in, a postmistress. I said, you know, you can't see postman because she doesn't, doesn't deliver the mail. She's mm -hmm. the postmistress. Mm -hmm. so somebody said, where does that come from? I said, well, ask the postman. He has some arrangement there. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of them were having a nice yes. time. <laughs> we have a commercial over there, too. Oh, you, that, that I should deliver? Mm -hmm. All right. Would you rather I did it? I, I won't fool around with it. Really? All right. We're, well, we're living dangerously. First of all, let me tell you what it is you're getting into. Oh, yes. I had the pleasure of meeting a charming young lady out in the hall not three days ago. Her name is Melanie Snyder, and she has this uh, company called Melanie Snyder Interiors. Oh, I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that? <laughs> no. Oh. You were looking for Campbell's soup? Or? You do it. I, uh, you, you're good at that. All right. I think Melanie's probably breathing a little easier right now. <laughs> You know, you can't say decorator anymore. They're interior designers. Ah, all right, get a load of this, folks. Decorator, decorator, decorator. Designer, designer. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, she has gone as far afield as Philadelphia and Los Angeles. That's pretty far afield. To, to, They're looking for a living room. To apply her wares. But Melanie Snyder Interiors offers busy men and women a solution to home decorating problems. For those who want their homes to reflect good taste, but don't have the... Reflect it or show it? Both. Okay. In the afternoon sunlight, when it slants in, there could be some actual reflection. But uh, we're talking about people who either don't have <laughs> Boy, the time. I wish you were my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Go out and commit a crime. I'll be there. Don't have the time or the know-how, or just don't have the good taste. All you have to do is call <laughs> Melanie Snyder in New York at two twelve, eight thirty eight, eighty three thirty three, or in Westchester at nine fourteen nine four six fifty nine hundred. It's very easy. You receive an extensive consultation. Room measurements are made and fed into a computer, and a plan is drawn. With this computer plan, you can plot furniture placement and then choose fabrics and colors. Melanie will even refer you to the best workmen to do the job, and they're not easy to find anymore. So whether we're talking about one room, the whole house, or even your kitchen and bath, it's all worry-free with Melanie Snyder Interiors of White Plains, New York. Her work is presently featured, by the way, at the prestigious Sands Point Showcase on Long Island, now through June 7th. So call her at 914-946-5900 or 212-838-8333. That's 838-8333. Melanie Schneider Interiors, designer assistance without designer prices. Henry Morgan is famous for a number of things, and one... Mainly, you know what it is? <coughs> what? Staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You okay. and John Travolta. <laughs> exactly. I saw you on the sidewalk before. I thought, boy, George, we started on the sidewalk and we're ending on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> but besides survival, Henry is famous for having good-natured fun with his commercials. Who, was, who were some of the early clients that you had, seriously? Because you were one of the groundbreakers of this kind of horsing around with commercials. Yeah. Maybe uh, the groundbreaker, for all I know. Uh, as far as we know, um, the only other person who ever f truly fooled around was Arthur Godfrey. Right. But I started uh, about two years before he did. Mm -hmm. Not He didn't copy me. He was in Washington. I was in New York. I remember his better than I remember mine because he had a furrier who had a dirty polar bear or something out on the sidewalk. <laughs> and he used to talk about that dirty polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> right. I had Adler shoes, Adler elevator shoes. Oh, yes. Now you can be taller than she is. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that 
threw me right off the cliff because um, <laughs> what do you do when you get home? You take your shoes off, and she finds out, you know. The, <laughs> that, that, but it's old shoes, strangely enough. Yes. Um, I lost a couple of accounts. One notably was Lifesavers. What could you have said about Lifesavers that they took uh, exception to? I said that... You buy a package of Lifesavers, and then you go home, and you unwrap it, and you find that the middles are gone. <laughs> <laughs> they have mulked you. This is the word this client got mulked. 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 Yeah. I've never heard that word since, by the way. Mm -hmm. It went right out of fashion that night, except with him. Now, he was an interesting man. His name was John Noble, and he owned Lifesavers, and mm -hmm. he used to listen to these commercials, and he canceled. And a couple of years later, I was working on the ABC <laughs> network, and Mr. Noble was the owner of the network by then. Mm -hmm. And it was a Christmas party for, there, eh, who's around? And Mr. Noble came over to me and he said, Do you know, I've never been certain that your method of selling is wrong. Ah, how nice of him after the battle was over. He's not certain that it's wrong. Yes, but that's as far as he could go to that's apologize. That's as far as he could go, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, I, but I had fun with, with, with a lot of, um, so what they did, ultimately, the clients who understood the value of it, Mm -hmm. It was based on a very simple premise. I never had to think it out. See, I used to be an announcer, mm -hmm. which was boring, because you, if you had a commercial, you did the same words day after day, day after day. Yes. And I started to kid around with the real stuff mm -hmm. when I was still an announcer. Ah. And that didn't work too well with the uh, staff, mm -hmm. the, the boss, whatever. Mm -hmm. And are you interested in this at all? You know, yes. You were in what city at this time, Philadelphia? New York. New York. Right. Yes. See how interested I am? I asked you away, <laughs> allegedly. There's a word I like, allegedly. Yes. Alleged perp. Uh, they, they say allegedly, after the guy's in jail, you mm -hmm. know, he's about on the way to the chair, the alleged yes. murderer. A jury says he's a murderer. They yes. Say, they also says that he's still alleged. Yeah. So the boss said, you've got to get that out of your system because it's, you know, lousing up some of our stuff here. So they gave me 15 minutes a week mm -hmm. on Saturday morning. As they said, to get it out of my system. But I didn't have any commercials. Ah. So my major work <laughs> was taken from me. I see. The, the sponsors were afraid to jump in for fear you would beat it their was brains out? quantity. And I, um, um, <coughs> I had to make up stuff. Mm. Just loony stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it was against radio. <laughs> yes. I used radio as my straight man. And very effectively, too. Yeah. You were worked. you were a, a groundbreaker, a path uh, finder. A, uh... Later died. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of your uh, jokes, many of your jokes, are uh, persist to this day. One of your famous weather report, the weather tomorrow muggy, followed by toogy, weggy, and thirty. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Many people have... Uh... Too bad you forgot it, but I uh, <laughs> live with it. <laughs> or... Well, there were there were a lot of them that uh, that was that was something that hit people because everybody then as now mm -hmm. takes the weather quite seriously. Yes, even though repeated experience tells us that the weatherman does not know whereof he speaks mm -hmm. or speaketh uh, very often. He said rain, and they show you charts, and they show you big. The weather maps to me are in a form of insanity. Here, I don't know how much of the New York uh, television you see in the evening. They have different colored boxes all over the map of the United States. <laughs> Red boxes, green boxes, the yellow boxes. Nobody's ever told me what they mean, and if I did know what they meant, since there are a hundred of them yeah. up there... Would you care? What I, what I, could I figure it out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way! Yeah. I said, hey, look at all them yellow boxes up there. <laughs> Look at all them red boxes. Now the guy starts to talk about the weather in Idaho. I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I truly don't. This is a profound not caring. Sure, 12 people in New York are going to Idaho today. They care. So It'll the other, change by the other 14 million are just bored. It doesn't make any difference. And that weather isn't necessarily coming here. It always goes <laughs> blows out to sea over Nahant. Yeah. I, I feel more strongly about the goofiness of a very high percentage of the people who do the weather on television. Uh, do you? I'd like to hear from you on this subject. Well, I don't want to name names because I don't like to harm individuals. Right. I, I would slap them in the face if I saw them. No, seriously. Who, where is it written, as we say, that you must hire a goofola to deliver the weather on an otherwise respectable newscast? Yeah, why is, and some of them think they're comics. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, some of them are painfully embarrassing. Yes. And, and hmm. uh, every place I go, if I'm in a saloon, a restaurant, to somebody's house at a party, uh, one of those goofola weather people is on, everybody says the same thing. They always say things like, God, what an idiot. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Does he think he's funny? You bring up something. But yeah. When you go to someone's home, 
do they put television on? <laughs> Upon rare occasion. <laughs> You're kidding. I mean, after dinner, if it's a big party, you know. No fooling. Just so we I can hear the weather. Go to anybody, <laughs> That's absurd. I, my gosh. Well, of course, we only know four people. <laughs> and it's between my wife and me. That's, you know, summing up all our friends together. We wouldn't dream of turning on television. Well, there's something... What are the people there for? To talk. It's <laughs> to talk, old-fashioned, I admit. To talk to each other. Well, yes. we, they're just not to television on all night. But upon the rare occasion when it is on, some goofy old weatherman <laughs> will spoil my whole evening. <laughs> we have to stop for a message or two. Oh, no, we don't. To hell with you, Mark. I've got the bit in my <laughs> teeth, and I'm running mind. down 42nd the Street with them. <laughs> they're doing it to you. They're doing it to you. All right, Mark. We're, you're, you're the boss. Well, you're the w. Hi, I'd like to give my impression. Yes. Of? Hello, big boy. Why don't you come up and see me sometime? Maria Uspenskaya, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Close, close. No, that's very, very cute, Mae West. Why is it that, that I guess Mae West would probably be the number one impression that... And Peter Lorre. Yes, that's a, another big one, too, but Mae West is always popular. She's actually number two. The most popular is M uh, Marcel Marceau. <laughs> well, I have a story with that. That's why. What's My grandmother story? had met Mae West years ago, of course, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was about 4'11 and blonde and nice build on her, and Mae West came up to her and said, uh, oh, oh, a smaller version of me. Ah, how cute. Although Mae West wasn't much taller. No, no, but I think she was a little more zostic than my grandmother was. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Ardeen. Ardeen. Yes. Well, well, that was a very good impression, Ardeen, and thank you for helping us out today. WNEW. Yeah, hi, Mark. I wanted to give you a couple of Arabic song titles if I could. Arabic song titles. Okay, somebody write these down. Now, here they come. Okay, uh, from the Broadway show of the same name, Aman for All Seasons. <laughs> That's very good, Aman for All Seasons. Terrific. Okay, and uh, how about a couple of songs from uh, the capital of Saudi Arabia? All right. Don't Make Me Blue. What was that again? Don't Make Me Blue. Uh, I don't get it. Don't Make Me Blue. Uh, we're a little vague on that one, sir. Okay, okay. how about the Mecca Mouse Club? Very good, Mecca Mouse Club. Very good. We've got one more, Steve. Okay. How about I ran all the way home? <laughs> very good. Between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> That's very good. What is your name? Uh, my name is Danny Rondo. Danny, you're very clever. Thank you for calling. WNEW. Yes, I have an impression for you of Billy Halep, one of the original Dead End Kids. A very rare impression. Billy Halep. Okay. okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Honest, Father. I didn't mean nothing by it, see? <laughs> I don't want to kill him, Father. He grabbed me. I seen red. I don't want to go to the stand, but I don't want to die. <laughs> there That's we go. Very convincing. Very <laughs> convincing. And your name is? Uh, Billy Garen. Billy Garen? Yes. Okay. Was your uh, did you ever have a relative who was a song plugger? Um, no. No, I didn't. I see. Because I knew one of the old days called Tubby Garen, one of the real old timers. Okay. Oh, well, that's a very good Billy Halp. That's you you specifically I have a Frank Morgan for you too. Oh, I love Frank Morgan. One of my great favorites as a performer was Frank Morgan. I love Frank the Morgan as a wizard of Oz. Yes, silly and dignity. As for you, my friend, you want a heart. Just remember that hearts are not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. Very good impression. Mm. Very good. And you're the first to do Frank Morgan for us. Okay. And your name again? Billy Garen. Garen. He's also the first to do Billy Halep. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Garen. Okay, Steve. WNEW. I have an Arab song title. Another Arab song title, all right. Lebanon, a jet plane. <laughs> <laughs> Lebanon, a jet plane. I hope somebody's marking these down, Barbara Maticata, out in the hall. All right, very good, sir. WNEW. Yes, I have an impression of um, Johnny Mathis. An impression of Johnny Mathis. In your name? You have to you have to visualize him singing on a TV and somebody listening into the, for the first time, not knowing whether their TV is at a sink. All right, good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very creative, as well as a good impression. There was a little added uh, level of information there. 
Well, I uh, I thought you might need this. <laughs> we need every bit of help we can get. Yes, I know, and I'm trying, and I keep calling every day, but the phone is busy, and uh, 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 I, your name? I don't know what more I can do for you guys. I mean, you know, I, I request your album from California, and you played it the next day. Ah. Uh, you know, I'm feeding you. I'm the straight man for this whole organization. <laughs> What's your name again? Joe Loitano. Joe Loitano. Well, we're happy to have you with us again today, Joe. Thanks for calling. WNEW. Hi. Yes. Uh, wow, well, I'm actually on the radio. Uh, I want to do my impression of Gandhi. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Mohandas? Yes. All right, Mahatma, uh, Mahat, <laughs> my hat, my cane, I'm leaving. All right, so you're on. Yes, well, well, I'm very, very happy to see you, and I'm very, very happy to be in this country. I came from India, but now I run a, a uh, cigarette stand in Queens, and I sell them to, to uh, pregnant Chinese ladies. Thank you. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Thanks. Very sir. good uh, English uh, Indian accent. <laughs> Bahrain, yip ba but in the rain. For you old timers out there. <laughs> Song titles at random. All right. Is this Steve Allen? Why would we lie? Of course You're it is. Right. Okay, my name is Herb Roffus. I'm calling from... Oh, you're going to start the call over now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know who I had. That's I'm all right. calling from Middlesex, New Jersey. Listen, it takes all kinds. It's all right with me. One of the songs is, I'm always chasing beer foam. I'm always chasing beer foams. All right. Red sails on a sunfish. Red sails on a sunfish. How are these Arabian? Uh, they're well, not. They're not Arabian. Oh, yeah. no. He's about three weeks behind with our category. <laughs> That's a, Thanks for right, Get back in your car, quick. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> the new toys in a space travel age, how to play for rocket balloon. This is originally written in Japanese, translated, I guess, word for word into English. And then it is four steps. They're called one step, two step, three step, four step. One step. Put attached plastic pipe half into balloon to help blowing easier. <laughs> <laughs> Two step, blow up slowly from opposite end. Three step, take off inserted plastic pipe and let it fly to upside. Wait a minute, could I hear number two again, please? <laughs> yes, blow up slowly from opposite end. Uh huh. All right. Number uh, three step, take off inserted plastic pipe and let it fly to upside. Four step. Keep flying to the sky and sounding like rocket do. <laughs> Could I hear number two again, please? <laughs> Not on my time. Do <laughs> you know, some amazing things have instructions. If you look on the a bo box of a light bulbs, they Are have you instructions. Interviewing him or, or <laughs> no, it's a free country. People can come up on the street and ask me questions. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Shampoo, for instance, has instructions on the side. Really. Well, look what they give you as instructions. As I'm here, I prefer to hear either me or you, <laughs> because I am a fan of yours. In fact, as people sometimes say, I'm your number one fan. Oh, it sounds to me like, a, like a, an oriental thing. Yeah. Welcome, number one fan. Uh, uh, number, may I hear number two again? <laughs> I had an instruction. This, this is a, a true and very dull but short All right. story. Shredded wheat. I eat shredded wheat, uh, spoon size. Of course, it says spoon size. They don't know what kind of spoon I use. I use, happen to have a very small spoon. But uh, it has a little picture of the queen on it, or Princess Di. Mm -hmm. It's a, one of those three-inch spoons. <laughs> and, uh, but, I, you know, I do the best. So uh, on the box it says, best eaten before this, uh, May 3rd, or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know that the day that I... Oh, Open this thing, it was May 3rd. No kidding. And I, yes, and I thought the whole inside would have turned, you know, into grease or something. Yeah. Now, how do they make up their minds that it, by May 3rd, uh, you know, they, of course, it was all, I didn't get sick or anything. They take the uh, date of uh, release from the factory. Yes. They probably add six months to it, that's simply. Yeah. And uh, that's how they decide. That's not what I think. I think, Steve. All right. There is a man, uh, he's called a timer. Mm hmm. And he sits there in the factory, and he stares at shredded wheat mm -hmm. until it really does go wherever shredded wheat goes. Yes. And then he reports to upstairs. How old said, it was when, it, when yes. that happened. Yeah, he and said, then listen, they... it was Tuesday, and I was, for a moment my, my, I looked out the window, and I looked back, the shredded wheat had disintegrated and become, what, salami, or yeah, right. whatever happens to it. Sure. Fungus. Fungus, probably. Spores all over. Ah, spores. Ah, now you got it. Thing flying off. 
<laughs> That's all. I have nothing further on this subject. Yes, but I do. Our two hypotheses are thing. not mutually exclusive. One moment. I'll get back to your problem, Doctor. <laughs> the other thing it says on the box, for low-sodium snacking. Yes. yes. Or low-salt snacking. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a letter to Shredder Week. I said, I don't have any low-salt in the house. How can I go low-salt snacking? Mm -hmm. We don't eat low-salt. We don't eat salt, as a matter of fact. Yes. I'm sure you don't either. You've been not, not bear years. salt. No, you no. disguise it. You wrap it or meat you around it or something. you still do that stuff you used to do about eating nuts and fruit all the time? Uh, what did I used to do about that? I remember when you were on a show, uh, you used to have a board. that you used to lie down on the board. Slam board. Te teeter -totters. But there were no nuts or fruit on the board. <laughs> yes, you did. You, you lay on the board with your feet up in the air eating nuts. That's true. They were dropped into my yap while I was down there by a did yap it do dropper. Did you good? I mean, did you live or what? <laughs> or what, basically. No, the, the lying down part of it had great value and does to this day. Do you still do that? Oh, yes. It gets more blood into your brain if you slant your body. What so do you do with more blood in your brain? <laughs> it comes out my ears. It gets all over my shirt. But game trooper that I am, I yes. jump up and I look like I had a fight in an Irish people saloon. People don't want to look at you, but they, they, right. they, they cough a little and pretend they don't see it. But they avert their gaze. How are you, uh, <clears throat> Steve? Oh, the blood coming out of your ears. No, I I, I, oops, I didn't mean to say that. No, it does revive your energy. Now, this it is does. not one of those dumb things that works because you read it in the, the Daily News once or something. It really does work. I was skeptical when I first uh, tried That's it. That's a funny thing you used to do, What's uh, that? reading letters from the Daily News, or well, supposed letters. You know, there were real letters, by the way. You, 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 I remember you used to horror them. Yes. Well, they were written in, in white hot fury, so I read them in that tone. Oh, that was funny stuff. Let's see if we can find one, right? Whatever became of you. Tony, could you find the letters page? There might be a funny... Uh, letter there of some kind. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm laughing in retrospect. <laughs> I'm, a very, I'm a delayed laugher, or wh whatever. Oh, I think we all are. We hark back. <laughs> I hark, hark. <laughs> you find a funny letter, I'll read it. Yes, good idea. We used to do that on the show. I would read a couple, and then if we had a guest, I would jam my fedora down over his ears, <laughs> and he would read a letter, and the audience would go, yeah, yeah. But you know one thing that made it work? The drummer. Quite seriously. That bit requires enormous rim shots. In the American people, bangity bangity bang. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pigeons are flying raggedy bang bang slap. And without the drummer, it's not nearly that funny. I wonder if people know when you talk about energy. I wonder if they have the remotest idea of of your motor activity. Uh, I will now spill the bean. Not a bunch of beans. One bean, I think I'll spill. <laughs> when Steve isn't talking or a commercial's on, do you know what he does? He plays the piano. That's true. He is nothing but a motor. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a very offensive because... <laughs> <laughs> I should be talking to you, right? No, no, no. You should be lying on your board, you know, eating <laughs> fruit and nuts. Rose-colored glasses. 4,001, folks. <laughs> well, we'll give you a chance to play the piano a little because we have to stop for a commercial. All right. And then we'll continue with <laughs> Steve Allen and Henry Morgan. I don't like the billing. With Henry Morgan and Steve Allen. Uh -huh. On <laughs> WNEW. Fake rim shot. Let me tell you about our neighbors. They're always the first ones to find a great bargain. Except this time, I'm one step ahead of them. I found a great deal during Zenith's spring clearance sale. First, I went to my local participating Zenith dealer and got a 144-page Rand McNally Road Atlas for only $249. And no purchase was necessary. Then, just for buying any Zenith TV or VCR, I was able to get a beautiful... Four